a young couple took their 10-month-old baby on a road trip down south. That baby developed profuse diarrhea, so his worried parents took him to see the local family doctor. The doctor's cure for his excessive pooping? Flat cola. Forty years later, that baby grew up to be the pharmacist standing in front of you today, <laughs> who has a strange fascination with both poop and cola. So leaving cola aside, that's for a whole other talk. What's with the fascination with poop? Well, it's not so much the feces itself, but more what lies within. As a healthcare professional specializing in infectious diseases, I'm fascinated with the microbiome. You and I are all host to an environment teeming with microbes, bacteria, viruses, and fungi known as the microbiome. From the minute that you were born, you begin to acquire microbes from your mother, the people around you, the food that you eat, and of course, your pets. For every human cell that you have on your body, you have at least one microbe cell. So in, in some ways of looking at it, you are as much microbe as you are you. There are trillions of bacteria, thousands of species, mostly inside of your gut, but they can be found everywhere, from under your tongue to between your toes. And as disturbing as that may sound, it's a product of millions of years of evolution and a partnership that is quite protective. The microbiome is an emerging field of study. Every day we are learning more about its benefits and the potential harms of disturbing it. The microbiome is believed to have a profound impact on your immune system, your nutrition, and even your mood. Most species in the zoo of diverse microbes don't cause any harm. But of course, not all of these bugs play nice, and severe infections can happen. And that is where antibiotics are vital. Since their discovery almost a century ago, antibiotics have saved millions of lives, added years, if not decades, to our lifespan, and transformed the healthcare system for the better. Today, complex surgical procedures, organ transplantation, and even chemotherapy are all the results of the availability of antibiotics. Of course, these are very important uses for antibiotics, but the problem is they're often being used when they shouldn't. For example, antibiotics for the common cold, flu, bronchitis, are generally not effective at all. Research shows that up to half of antibiotics prescribed are unnecessary. And what's worse, you know what they might be doing to your microbiome. Ed Young, a journalist, science writer, and author, said it best, antibiotics are like nuking a city to deal with a rat. A single course of antibiotics can disrupt your microbiome for up to a year. What's so bad about disrupting the microbiome? Let me share with you a couple of examples. C. difficile. C. diff is the quintessential example of the harms of messing with your microbiome. And it's an example of how antibiotics can actually lead to infections. C. diff is a bacterium that loves oxygen-free environments inside of your intestine. It can be transferred from person to person, usually because of poor hand hygiene via the fecal to oral route, which is, yes, as gross as it sounds. <laughs> C. difficile can also be transferred indirectly because many of the surfaces and environments around us are believed to be covered in an ever so light layer of poop, affectionately known as the fecal veneer. C. difficile is commonly preceded by antibiotic use. In fact, almost all cases of C. diff that I've seen were preceded by antibiotics. And this is because C. diff is resistant to the effects of antibiotics, many antibiotics. So an exposure to an antibiotic allows for destruction of your protective microbiome, while C. difficile thrives and multiplies and produces toxins. The effects of C. difficile can range from a mild nuisance diarrhea to life-threatening balloon-like expansion of your intestines, called toxic megacolon. Another example of the harms of messing with your microbiome is antimicrobial resistance. Because you have trillions of bacteria living on you right now, some of them, by chance, would have developed resistance to the effects of antibiotics. And other resistant bacteria you may have picked up from the people and environments around you. And just like for C. difficile, a course of antibiotics can disrupt your microbiome, killing those susceptible organisms 
and leaving behind those less friendly, resistant ones. So if you take an antibiotic, you're much more likely to be infected with a resistant organism next time. In fact, it's about threefold odds increase of being infected with a resistant organism with previous antibiotic use. So we are beginning now to see doctors, health, uh, doctors, pharmacists, and other healthcare professionals are beginning to see infections so resistant to the effects of antibiotics that there are no modern antibiotics left to treat these infections. This puts patients at serious risk of harm, including death, and should eerily remind us of a century ago when antibiotics were not yet discovered and infectious diseases were a leading cause of death. But something so simple as a cut on your skin could be fatal. So is it all doom and gloom, or is there a way forward? In theory, humans are intelligent and can develop new antibiotics to battle these resistant infections. But in reality, developing a new antibiotic requires a huge financial incentive, as it costs billions of dollars and takes years, if not decades, of hard work. On the other hand, bacteria take about 20 minutes to replicate and can develop new resistant mutations on a regular basis. As Ed Young put it, humans crawl and bacteria run. So we won't win the arms race against antibiotic resistance simply by developing new antibiotics. The way forward is to prevent resistant infections in the first place by leveraging our microbiome, by priming our immune system through vaccination, and by using the antibiotics that we already have much more wisely. Being wise about antibiotic use is called antibiotic stewardship, and it's everyone's responsibility. That's because antibiotic resistance is not only a threat to you, it's a threat to all of us as a society. The World Health Organization has identified antimicrobial resistance as one of the greatest public health threats of our lifetime. And because these resistant organisms can transfer from person to person, resistance is only a handshake or a plane ride away from you. So a global and a local effort are both needed. So I'd like to leave you with three things that you can do to help. First, prevent sharing drug-resistant bacteria by keeping your hands clean and making sure others do too. Who knew that a simple task we all learned in kindergarten could save somebody's life? Second, remember that you are a vital player in the fight against antimicrobial resistance. Always think twice about the need for antibiotics and ask your doctor, pharmacist, and nurse practitioner about the benefits and the harms of taking antibiotics. And third, remember, not all bacteria are evil enemies worthy of obliteration. Taking a course of antibiotics just in case there's an infection can cause more harm than good by disturbing that delicate partnership between you and your microbiome. In retrospect, I've made more references to poop in this talk than any other talk that I've given. <laughs> that is by design. Remember, your poop is more important than you think. Respect your poop and the microbes within. <laughs>